I was traveling up north and I had the opportunity to stop at a restaurant, I believe it was called Chips, and they had stuffed pancakes. And I said, so I tried it, it was bacon, cheddar, apple stuffed pancakes, they were so good. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna make that. So we did a little sample earlier today just to see how they were gonna come out because it's our first time making it. And everybody said they were good, so we're gonna do it again for you guys tonight. Welcome to our second edition of My Wife Can't Cook, where some of us can cook, some of us can't, but guess what? We cook it either way. Um, so tonight is a our My Wife Can't Cook breakfast, breakfast. edition, yes. which is my husband's idea for tonight's show. But before we begin our um, cooking, diving into this breakfast edition, we want to go ahead and pray um, over our food and over this uh, live session. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you today, Lord God, for giving us the, the vision, Father. We thank you, God, for all that you've done, God. We thank you for allowing us to prepare this food, God. We pray that you remove any impurities, God, and let it be nourishing to our bodies. And not only that, but let it minister to our souls. We bless you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We're having... Uh, Apple, apple cheddar bacon stuffed pancakes. That's a whew, that's a tongue twister. Apple cheddar bacon stuffed pancakes. Yes, and we're also going to have codfish and potatoes. Um, my wife's from Virginia. She moved up to New Jersey when she was about five. So one of the things that she always liked to get when she goes back home is codfish and potatoes. So I decided I decided to start making it for her. I do make it a little bit different than the way she grew up on it. Typically, they use the salted codfish where you have to uh, let it soak overnight to release a lot of the salt, then wash it off and cook. But usually I'm spontaneous and I cook what I felt like cooking that day. So I started using the fresh codfish with it and uh, everybody likes it. So we're gonna make that for you today as well. All right, let's get this thing started. So first we're gonna prepare our codfish. Um, we're gonna, you wanna bring the codfish over? Yep. So we can. So here's our codfish. It was one large piece, a little over a pound, about a pound mm -hmm. and a half. So we're going to fry this in a little bit of butter. We're also going to add some onions and peppers and things like that to it. So we'll show you all the ingredients. Yes. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty clearly. Yes, so we have our onions and peppers and things chopped up here. We cooked earlier because we knew we knew we were going to be making stuffed pancakes, so in order to do that, we had to prepare the bacon in advance. When we prepared the bacon, we did save our bacon grease. You don't have to use bacon grease if you don't want to. You can use <laughs> olive oil, I know, but I saved my bacon grease so that I can use a little bit of that to fry my potatoes in and fry the codfish in, and I am also going to add a little bit of butter. All right, so we got the bacon grease going in. Let that melt down, he won't see that. Yeah, you can take that. And now, all right, let's see, let's turn this backwards. You take the cheese, yeah. We have our peppers he already um, pre cut. We have our, our red pepper, red bell pepper. We have our Spanish onion, our um, scallions, and chives. And chives. So, when I do it, usually I like to keep a couple pieces separate, whether it's for the fish whether it's the onions and pepper in different sizes because I want to keep a little bit together for my presentation. So I'm going to put the uh, onions and peppers in here now that I'm going to keep just for presentation for the top part and fry them off and then I'm going to take them out and put them to the side. Oh, these, these aren't actually going? So these won't actually be in my cooking mix. I just want to get these cooked up. Get, I still want them to hold the integrity of their size that way they can look good when they're on top of the food. So what do you have your heat on? Is it on medium? So I actually have my heat on high. I tell everybody, turn the fire down all the time because I'm really not going to cook this that long. I, I want to get the peppers and onions, uh, the onions a little translucent, but I still want the peppers crunchy. I still want them to hold their texture. All right. So, um, and this is also flavoring up that oil. So that bacon grease that I just put in here, that's going to rem that's going to season up, of course, these onions and peppers. But this onions and peppers is also seasoning the oil that we're going to drop our fish in. Okay. So, oh, what else we got here? 
So do we have or do you have to put no kind of seasoning in that? I'm not going to put a lot of seasoning in. We can grab some salt and pepper or salt and pepper to taste. But remember, we have our smoked bacon that we cooked earlier. So that has flavor. We have the onions and peppers. The onions and peppers have flavor. So we don't have to um, overdo it with seasonings. We're getting our natural flavor and seasonings from the uh, vegetables. All right, so here we have our salt and pepper. So let's do, a half a, let's do a teaspoon of each. A teaspoon. And actually, we can just prepare it. And then once we put the fish in, we can do that. So that's it. I, I like a little crunch on my onions and peppers. So we're gonna take them out now. We're done with them. And we're gonna put all the rest of the onions and peppers in that are gonna be incorporated with our potatoes. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to boil my potatoes first. So that way I can fry them real quickly. They don't have to absorb a lot of oil. Mm -hmm. And it also, if I'm cooking a big breakfast for my family, I can have the potatoes boiling on the side while I'm getting everything else done. So you can kind of multitask a little bit. Okay. So now this is. So now we got our scallions, Spanish onion. We got some peppers. Now how many Spanish onions was that? Was that one Spanish this onion? Is one Spanish onion. And how many red peppers? One red pepper. Okay, you probably gonna get a spoon now. Yeah. I'm not going to put my chives inside. I'm going to use my chives as a garnishment. Okay. It's a big platter. Yeah. We can put our fish in now. Now, now the codfish we got fresh from um, Shot Right. It's cut fresh. So you need the salt and pepper now. Yeah, you can add salt and pepper. So the codfish wasn't uh, frozen. It wasn't the salted codfish either. Nothing against the salted codfish. But it takes, I know from like... It's a longer process. Yeah, from growing up down south, you have to actually soak it for a certain amount of hours or something like that. Yeah, overnight. I mean, overnight for all the salt to come out of, come out of it. So now we got... When you buy it like this, you don't have to do all of that. So I'm just going to sprinkle salt, teaspoon, just a teaspoon of salt over the codfish. And then I'm going to try this with pepper. And then I'm going to use um, a teaspoon of salt. Now, I don't, I'm not a salt person. I actually don't like the taste of salt. But my husband, he, he know what he's doing, so I'm going to do what he tells me <laughs> at this point. This is why it's called my wife can't cook. I'm just, I'm gonna follow directions on this one. <laughs> so you might say, oh, that seems like a lot of salt, but don't forget this whole mixture, we're gonna mix this mixture up with our potatoes as well. Yes, it doesn't, you don't eat it, like it's not a, something you eat whole, um, it's chopped up in with the potatoes. I mean, you can eat it whole if you want, but for this um, recipe and this meal, we are going to, um, we're going to chop it up. So when I'm break, when I get done, I'm going to break this all up together. And again, I'm going to save a piece of the codfish and put it right on top of the potatoes so that you can really get, see what you're eating. And how, what's the cooking time for, for the codfish? Because codfish don't take long to cook. Doesn't take long at all. You're going to cook it until it begins to get nice and flaky and break apart. So not necessary time, it's not going to take too long. I'm reduced my heat as well. I don't have it as high as I had it earlier. Okay. Um, also, what about, you know, bake? can we bake it? Like, could you bake it? You could bake it as well. With the potatoes, I'm talking about raw with the potatoes and raw with You the could. It's going to take a little longer. But, you know, we're also, we want that little bit of crisp that you get when you fry things. So that's why we're not baking it. So we're pan frying it right now. Okay. All right, so while that's going, we're going to put that on low and let that keep going, and we're going to start preparing our apples. So we use Granny Smith apples. Um, they are already, he um, cut the cores out of them, all of them, and just pretty much chopped them up. I don't know if you can see that, but they're pretty much already chopped up and uh, cut, sliced up pretty good. All right, so I'm going to put some butter in there in the frying pan. 
I'm looking for about two tablespoons of butter. Okay. And let that melt down a little bit. Uh, and get some heat on there. Two tablespoons of butter, a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, salt. Yeah. Salt. And a teaspoon of cinnamon. Cinnamon. Yeah. Okay. Babe, I think and two you... tablespoons of brown sugar. Okay. Got our brown sugar in here. Ooh, it's a little, a little matter of it. So we got some butter. We're gonna let this cook and reduce. This is looking good. How long does that take to cook down? This probably takes about a good 10 minutes or so, depending on how high you have the heat. I don't want my butter to burn and the sugar to stick too fast, so I, I have it on medium. But we're going to switch it, let that keep on cooking on medium. And while that's cooking, we're going to go back to the fish for a little bit. Okay. Mm, they look good. As you can see, it's starting to break up very easily as it cooks. It become real flaky. But you can see there's a little bit of juice coming from the fish in there. And of course, remember we put the bacon grease in there earlier. That's all. That's gonna be all real good flavor for the potatoes. We throw these potatoes in there okay. first. And you need to season the potatoes. Yep. Let's season these potatoes. What, what, what you want to put on them? So these are just um, all-purpose potatoes that we um, boiled, and he actually left the skin on these ones. Partially. So I took about eighty percent of the skin off. I like the skin on mine, but I know some people don't, so it's your choice. Again, we're staying away from putting a lot of salt in the food. We're going to use some Mrs. Dash. And if you see the potatoes, they're not all the way, like they're they're not mushy. All right, so you want to pour the codfish in the... Oh, that looks so good. That looks pretty. That looks pretty. So you, he just poured the codfish in there, and we're just going to stir it to get it evenly distributed in the pan. Then you're gonna check our apples. Apples are looking good. I'm gonna give it a little bit more heat. So. And this is not this is actually not part of the um pancakes. This is just a side you can eat with the pancakes. Um but the pancakes taste pretty good, y'all. Alright. Surprisingly good. good. So we're gonna let it cook down. Yeah. So we can swap. Um, so now you wanna move that to the back? The apples are cooking down pretty good. Wow, they're really soft and pretty fast. So for the apples, again, I want them to be able to hold the integrity of their shape because we're going to put them on, inside the pancakes. Mm. And again, we're going to continue so, to let this so cook down. We don't have to rush it because we have some more preparation to do. So everything now that we're not going to be working it with is going on low. Okay. So now we're going to come, are we going to prepare the, um, we want to prepare our pancake mix. Okay. All right. Okay. So can we come over here guys? All right. We got our pancake mix already made. So we use the homebrew jack, just add water pancake mix. We're we'll use a nice thick cut bacon, as you can see, the bacon's nice and crispy Good here. Bacon. What we're gonna do, grab a knife. So this would have been two whole pieces of bacon, actually that would have been two and a quarter. I'm gonna chop this up real, actually we crumble it first, and then we're gonna chop it up and put this in our pancake mix. So this is smoked bacon, so it's got a lot of flavor. So the flavor is gonna go a really long way. And you can also, some people, this is actually pork, pork bacon. 
But if you don't want to use this, you can buy turkey bacon or anything like that. So for cheddar, I'm going to use two tablespoons, and I actually have a tablespoon. It's going to be a healthy heaping, so I'm not. I'm going to be real generous with the amount that I'm putting in there. So a little bit over two tablespoons on And that actually, that was just a mild cheddar in the pack from Shop Ray. So these apples are you splashing me. <laughs> so these apples are getting cut up real, almost the applesauce, and they're going to go right in the mixture. All right. So just apple, cheddar, and bacon. All right, this is the apple, cheddar, and bacon. All mixed in here. So I want to point out something on the griddle. If you notice with my griddle, no butter on there. I see people that have to make pancakes and things all the time. If you're cooking it on a non-stick surface, you don't need to put any uh, butter on there. First of all, the butter is going to burn quickly because you have your griddle really hot. So to get that nice golden brown uh, smooth surface like you see on the commercials, you know, if you were to look at some uh, McDonald's pancakes or so, they always look perfectly brown. If you want that same look, you don't put any butter on there. You put the butter on the pancakes when they come off the griddle. I'm going to be using about a half a cup size pancakes. So we're gonna start. And we have heated. Heat we have this already heated on 350. Yeah, I'm gonna go a little warmer. Let's go like 375. Okay. All right. So I have the apples here. Okay. I'm gonna pour one third cup on the griddle, and then when one side starts to cook, I'm gonna place the apples right on top, and that's how we're gonna get that stuffed apple. On. All right. Remember, we also have apple and cheddar and bacon already in the pancakes. See, I gave them a little space in between. Griddle's nice and hot. Okay. All right, so we have pancakes lead now. We got here, we got like some comment. They were asking about when the merchandise is coming. Are you going to do aprons and will different color t-shirts? Yes. Um, Next week? <laughs> yes. We will actually, the t-shirts will be posted tonight. We do have t-shirts. We have blue, red, black, white, and white right now. They, the t-shirts will be posted tonight. Um, the aprons, we're working on the aprons. We don't have any aprons yet. And we will also post the bags tonight. Um, so everything will be available to, tonight for purchase after the show. I will post it on the um, page. He put the apples on the undone side and then flipped it. And so that the heat should seal it inside the pancake. Yes. Um, but he did that really easy because I would have had, I probably would have had a pancake on the side of the floor hanging off in, in the, in the um, sink somewhere. So I turned my fire down a little bit so they don't cook too fast. Cause remember we have some cheese and things cheese inside the pancakes. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter on the pancakes now. Let's see how the other side this looks. This one, the butter is... That's fine. Go ahead, you can flip them now. They're, they're not gonna fall okay. apart. Don't smash them. Did oh. you see what she just did? She smashed the pancake. We I want the pancakes to be light and Here, fluffy. Babe, see, they look good. Ooh. I'm really only flipping them so you can see how the other side look looks. Look at the apple, the apple. Get up, Get up on that apple. We need an apple angle. See the apple in there? See that apple inside of that pancake? It looks so good. All right. You just uh, plate them. Okay, so now we're gonna move over. Back, back over here to the stove. To our codfish and potatoes. Oh, it smells so good. Yes. Uh, if, I, if I had that goofy face like Mark Weems, I'll be making his face <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> his, his his face that shows oh it's amazing on the taste so now we get ready to plate this up okay. Got it. okay so usually when I have some family over for breakfast I usually like to make something like this for them it's not something you're gonna get all the time so that's why I like to make this uh, it's not a everyday breakfast thing but as you can see it was really fast really easy to make we're gonna place extra onions and peppers 
a little bit on the crispier side. Yeah, I can work here for you. Okay, that'll be nice. Let me come on this side. So we got some extra onions and peppers. And we have our extra piece of cod that we're gonna lay right on top. So people, the reason why also I do that is so that people don't, people might have an allergic reaction to food or so. You don't want them to just dig in and don't know what they're getting. So, and we're gonna garnish with some chives. This, so this is what our codfish and potatoes look like. It looks delicious. It looks pretty. I mean, it looks presentable. Um, it just looks scrumptious. Um, I'm ready to eat. <laughs> All right, now we're about to plate up our our um, stuff. And while he, while he's gathering that stuff, I want to show you what syrups we have here. Okay, so, so these are uh, Maple Grove Vermont um, Maple Grove of Vermont Maple Grove Farms of Vermont mm -hmm. syrups that we got from Shoprite. Um, we buy these quite quite often. They have different flavors. This is our blueberry flavor. Um, this is the blueberry. This is our strawberry flavor. And this is our boysenberry uh, flavor. I started warming my bacon back up so that the bacon can be nice and warm when it goes on the plate. I'm gonna put in between each layer, I'm gonna put some bacon in between each layer so that people are getting a full taste of everything and the cheese. Okay. Hmm. I got it. Cheese in the middle. More bacon. More bacon. More cheese. More bacon. And as you can see, the apples are already there. I want that to go right in the center of the bacon. Nice mm, and full. Good. So, All right. and then we have a little bit of juice left in the pan from that we're going to pour right on there. And the last tip is a little bit of cheese on top. And then you can put whatever syrup you like on top. I think I'm going to do blueberry. You want to put a we could put some syrup on there, drizzle. I'm not going to do a lot, just a little. All right, okay. And Is there's it? your bacon cheddar stuffed pancakes. pancakes. So I'm gonna lift this up so y'all can see this. See this goodness. Oh Lord. Can y'all see that? How good it looks. I mean, it's not, and it's not falling apart. Cause y'all know, everybody know me know I don't eat wet bread. But this is not falling apart, it's hearty. I mean, I don't know if you have to have three stacks, but you can do one or one or maybe two, but it looks really good. So that is our complete course for tonight. And we also just want to remind you to keep God first. Continue to pray with everything that's going on. Keep God first. And don't ever think you can't do anything because with God, anything is possible. All things. Are All right. things. And I'm a witness because anybody who knows me know I couldn't cook. But baby. We don't got, it's a whole, it's a whole cooking show. It'll turn into a whole cooking show. So to God be the glory. You all have a blessed night. And I'll see all of our, all those who watch the night camps, I'll see you tonight at 9.30. You all have a blessed night. Have a blessed night. And see you next week.